Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm going to put together my Pulse printer I got from Matter Hackers and I'm taking you with me right here on the Evil Ted channel. There it is. Again, you guys, I cut it, but then I stopped and realized I have to document this. <laughs> so, uh, get my camera. Here we go. Open up. Ooh. Oh, we got a letter here from Pulse. Welcome to the Pulse family. I want to thank you for choosing the Pulse 3D prints to create, invent, and share. We set out to create high quality customized 3D prints to fit your specific needs and budget. Pulse is built on a remarkable, reliable platform and because we offer industry leading components, the capabilities of this printer can grow to ensure the success of all your projects. Your Pulse is truly one of a kind, tailored to you. We started making it when your order is placed. Uh, we stand by the product and you can expect us to provide support for a lifetime. Do not hesitate to reach out to us for help and give us feedback anytime. Don't worry, I guarantee you'll be hearing from me shortly. The getting started guide, let's do this. There it is, the Pulse. Welcome to the Pulse family. Excellent. Here we go. Unboxing. All right, unbox. Donuts. We got the uh, cord. We got the control box. An exacto blade. Put this up very carefully. I guess we're going to grab it from the uh, top of the handle here. And lift it up. Remove red zip ties. Step three, mount the screen. Mounting screen. There's these slots here, and it slots right here. Oh, fantastic. And again, everybody, these parts are 3D printed as well, too. It's nice that they make this thing with actual 3D prints. Come on. Oop. All right. It is mounted. Got it? Step four, connect power supply. Step five, plug USB cable into pulse. Step six, clear the bed. Every pulse printer is tested before it's shipped out. Remove the test print from the bed. Well, oh, there he is. I believe that's their logo, little Matter Hacker Space Guy. And that's why they gave me the Exacto Blade. All right, here we go. This will be my first time taking something off a, a printer base. There he goes. I got him. He's got to get it started. Oh, he's on there. Yay. <laughs> All right, got it. Next step. <gasps> Install printer software. Hmm, this is where my assistant Pete will come in handy. Well, before Pete gets here and sets everything up, I thought it was wise to build a table strictly for the 3D printer. I got it built and it is mounted. I have brackets in the top in the corner and one on the floor, little metal brackets I got from Home Depot to stabilize and make sure this table does not move when it's printing. And this has been planted right next to the computer. So when Pete hooks up the USB port, it's right next door. Pete! Where's Pete? Hello, Ted and Internet. <laughs> hey, everybody, Pete. Pete's my new assistant. He's very technically savvy. Pete, 
I need help with my pulse printer. Yes, you do. Let's see if we can figure this thing out. Excellent. There are tons of options for 3D printing and modeling software, but we're going to go with the Matter Hacker's own software, Matter Control. Uh, it's nice because you can do a little bit of modeling as well as all of the slicing, and it just works really well with their printers, or so we've been told. So we're going to download the most recent version. Fantastic. Run it, and looks like it's a pretty small application, so it shouldn't take too long to install. Blindly agree to agreements. <laughs> yes. And... Oh, there it goes. It's installing. There we go. It's the first time you open Matter Control. It's going to run us through a tutorial. Uh, there are videos on Matter Hacker's websites uh, about this software, and I highly recommend them. I watched a few of them, and they were very informative. They've got a beginner, intermediate, and advanced tutorial just kind of introducing you to the different components of the software. Um, but going through it, it's just a nice little thing showing you where the buttons are, making sure that you know what everything looks like, open files, some of the modeling buttons, some of the libraries that they give you when you're ready to start printing. But yes, this is all pretty straightforward software stuff. If you're experienced in printing, you obviously skip tutorials, and if you're brave, obviously skip tutorials. Uh, I think that's everything. So here we are. We are in our space, ready to start modeling, dropping some shapes in, and maybe giving this 3D printing thing a whirl. So a uh, friend of Ted sent us this file to get started with. Uh, James. James! Thanks, James! James from the Littlest Prop Shop, and it looks like a great test to kind of see the fidelity of the printer, the quality that we're going to be getting from it, and we'll be ready to get started as soon as we finish everything that needs to be for set up for the printer. All right. Okay, as you see, I went ahead and plugged this into the power strip. I just took the USB connector, and went down and hooked this into the computer, way down there. So we'll go back to the screen and see what we have to do next. Power is on, the printer is connected. We're ready to do the setup for that. And again, that's pretty straightforward. Because we, don't, we weren't prompted to set up a printer, we can just start by clicking print, uh, creating a new printer, and we have a pulse model number D232. All right, and we'll call it pulse D232. That sounds good. Now let's call it Ted's printer. Hey, good idea. Set up wizard, disconnect the printer if currently connected. All right, well, we're going to unconnect the printer now. Ted is unplugging his printer. Now connect it. Right, here we go. Congratulations on connecting your printer. Yay. It seems good. Next few screens will walk through calibration. We're going to home it, probe the bed at the center, and manually measure the extrusion. All right. The printer should now be homing. It's moving. Oh my God, it's moving. It's doing something. Now we're measuring the height of the extruder, and for that we need a sheet of paper. Place a sheet of paper underneath the tip of the extruder. Okay. Perfect. And uh, using the above controls, press Z minus until there is resistance to moving the paper, then press Z press once to move it. So there's controls for the printer, and we're basically lowering this until it's touching the paper. Oh, so you just do it by moving it. Very close. Very close. There it is. And then we plus Z press once. And I assume that's because the up and down is in the Z axis. Now we refine. Oh, there's the resistance. And then we move it up once. And click next. Our probe is now calibrated. If we want to ever redo that, we can just go to the Controls tab and recalibrate, and we can click Done over on the software side of things. Next, we have to do the leveling wizard. Um, we are doing a handful of things here, and hopefully it'll only take four minutes. 
I will listen to whatever the computer tells me to do at this point. So there it goes, calibrating again. That's step one of nine. I like machines that do all the work for me. <laughs> our next step is to load our filament. Matter Hackers sent us over some PLA that we're going to be using. Got the, we have 3D printing filament, and I believe this is the Pro Series PLA. Got Pro Series on there. And we're ready to start loading. Let's trim the end of the filament to ensure a good load. Luckily, we have a pair of those right here. Let's trim the end of the filament to ensure a good load. Luckily, we have a pair of those right here. And we'll go next. Insert the filament into the extruder until you feel it start to feed. This stuff's pretty straightforward. Simply lay the spool on the spool holder. There's probably a term for that. And then start feeding the filament in until we feel resistance or until we feel the printer start to grab. To be fed in and, and it's going to feed the rest of the way until it gets to its extruding tip. And there it goes. The first little bit came out and it knew to stop. So we think we're all ready to get started to give this. Uh, we've got our object, our filament loaded, the printer's connected, and um, ready to give this a shot. There's one thing that we've noticed about this uh, model that we were sent is that this roof is very floating and because printers go layer by layer I believe I'm no expert but I believe that will need some support so we can generate some supports in here oh, I see. and there we go and now there will be these little tendrils so that the object prints safely so to speak and I guess we just cross our fingers and hope for the best. All right, let's do it. Starting the print. All right, there's a little tugboat complete. Uh, now, here's the test. See if I can get this off the bed. Oh, Ta-da! <laughs> Look at that. All right, you guys can see the little uh, the bridges on this. I'm going to get in with my X-Acto blade. Oh yeah, this stuff comes out rather easy. Got the majority of that all. Again, there's a little bit of a texture to it. And of course, this can be remedied by a little bit of a, some sanding action. Well, of course, I could sand this thing for days. This is a little boat, just with test. But I uh, definitely, uh, you can see the possibilities. I'm going to save my sanding skill for something a little bit more impressive and a little bit bigger. Not bad for my first print. Pretty exciting. <laughs> a shout out to my friend James over the Littlest Prop Shop for that file. My mission now is to go find something a little bit bigger and more elaborate. And also a shout out to Matter Hackers for their amazing pulse printer. If you're starting off in 3D printing like I am, I recommend the pulse printer. Now, if you people out there don't have a Pete to help you, you can definitely go to matterhackers.com and they have really great tutorials showing you step by step of how to set up your printer. This boat is cool, but my mission now is to go find something a little bit more elaborate to print. I want to take this printer to the full test. I want to see what I can do with this guy. And again, everybody, just a real quick thing. Uh, I was using an X-Acto blade to take the prints off the bed, but I've just discovered too, you can take the bed off, slightly flex it, and the 3D prints pop off. So, <laughs> something I just learned. If this is your first time watching my videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you guys are not so much into printing, but into foam fabricating, you should go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, where I have numerous patterns for sale. I have also Amazon links. The more you shop, the more I keep making videos. Come back for part two on my 3D printing adventures. I'm going to find something a little bit more elaborate. I want to take this uh, printer and put it to the test. Uh, and hopefully my next mission will be is to do a little collaboration of making something foam and putting 3D parts to it. So I will catch you back next time right here on the Evil Ted channel.